you grab somebody today? <laughs> you tell them you got it, man. <laughs> but if you don't get it, you're going to get it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. <laughs> What a time and season. We are entering powerful, very, very powerful. I have a word for 2021, and we have sheets, and I'm sure you can get it out of Eternal Library soon, today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Another challenge for Viv. And again, you can get copies of it. We have it. So I want to start off with the word first before I go to the teaching. <sighs> the word for 2021 the Lord gave me was the, called the gathering. And in, in this gathering, there's going to be grouping. And he gave me, he started off with Matthew 13, and he said on another parable, he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in this field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted the, and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came to him and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no. Lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in the bundles to burn. Then gather the wheat into the barn. The Lord said the harvest has begun. It's called the great harvest. And I have caused the scattering both to the wicked and to the righteous. To the wicked that they might fall into their own nets of stronger delusion. And to the righteous that they might fall into the nets of discernment. I have scattered my righteous to declare my gospel and, and the wicked to dismantle their agenda. I have delayed my wrath to the wicked so that the world might understand the true reality of evil in hopes that they might cooperate with my invitation of escape. I'm shooting warning signs across the, bo the bowels of the hearts of mankind so that they might taste fear and turn back to me with repentance and a desire to exchange the distressing fear of the world for the fear of the Lord. 2020 was a year of insight. 2021 will be a year of humility and understanding. I am looking for those that will set their hearts as my servant Daniel did. The river of my will flows strong and abundantly to those in the river. But to those who are on the banks, there will be instability, frustration, and confusion. They only drink at their convenience because they have partaken of the deceptive food of compromise. To those on the banks of my will, I will cause jealousy to arise, and they will either get in the river or grow further away. I am gathering the deceived, the compromised, rebellious, perverse, greedy, violent, unforgiving, hateful, arrogant, and all liars into two groups that they have my seal of approval or disapproval. These groups will be labeled Christ or Antichrist from now on. In other words, he's saying, stop, get off your own labels and look at what his labels. They're either Antichrist or they're Christ, one or the other. If you are not with me, then you're against me. Because you refuse to assemble in my river, I will refuse to assemble with you. I have set a standard for my people and a refuge of defense that they may partake of my divine nature to endure all attacks of deception. In 2021, I will release many of my treasures of my heart followed by an aggressive anointing. 
What seemed to be easy will become harder, and what was once hard will become easier. I will continue to shake the heavens and the earth until they become one. You must stop looking at the agenda of the world because it will bring you back to the world. I have taken you out of the world and its corruption so that you might freely receive the things I have for you. The world will increase its hatred toward you because of their unrest and jealousy of your peace. Israel will be my key factor of protection to those nations that uphold her. But to those that attempt to destroy her, I will melt their gold and silver and haul it away into my river of provision. The time is at hand to gather, to train, to arm, to anoint, to give, to forgive, to surrender, and to send. I do not need to tell you all the things to come. What I need is for my people to seek, to trust, to obey, to assemble, to unite, and to focus. This is my request that allows my final say in every circumstance. I have released my trump to do my bidding and bring my people together. All that resist my trump resist me. My trump has a sound that vibrates the wicked to the surface for exposure. Troubles are always ahead of my anointed so I can take the victory and so that my name would be glorified. 2021 will be will release the high praise of Jesus like never heard before. His name will bring healing to many and will bring fear to the unknown. They will remember the one they pierced while I pierced their hearts with conviction. I am preparing my bride for departure. And for the next few years, I will be building remnants of reality of who I am. Don't fret, for your labor will not be in vain, nor your prayers discarded. As long as you hold to my call and partake of my river, I will perfect the things that pertain to my people and purify their hearts. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. Amen? Praise God. I know it's kind of all gathered together and quick, but like I said, you can observe it. Um, you can go to Eternal Library or we have them printed there. But it's pretty, pretty amazing because one of the things that the Lord has said, he says, listen, I, there's a special key I want to release to my people because they got to understand something. In other words, we got to maintain something. What is the key of victory? What is the key of victory? You know, I mean, first of all, the word says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, right? So we know that truth is a part of the key of victory. Amen. But he said, you know, my people know the truth. The problem is, is they're not avoiding deception. So the key of victory is to constantly void deception. That's the key. Stop voiding. I mean, you know, just continue to void the deceptive. Amen? So in that, that means you and I should be associating with people that know the truth. Amen? So if you start to drift, someone can help you. Listen, things are not going to get better. They're going to get harder. In every area. It doesn't matter. Too many people are blatant the bait of Satan and being drifted away. Taken out of the river of life. Assembling is essential for me and you. And you've heard me say this over and over and over. I can't make it without assembling. There are no lone rangers. Amen? This is where we gather together. We fellowship. This is where we commune in the spirit. This is where communion is. Amen? So in this, he said, there, I want this is called the key of victory. Avoid deception. You want the key? Here it is. Avoid deception. And Titus chapter 2. Titus 2, it's just for you. Glory. Titus 2. You know, so uh, if he's saying the key to victory is avoiding deception, that means a lot more deception is going to come. Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. 
Let's speak it. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should be live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great and God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. And I remember when you see might, that means cooperation. Amen? Because he says that he might redeem us from every lawless deed. That means that you, without cooperation, you're not going <laughs> to, you're going to be deceived again. Verse 15. Speak these things, exhort, rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. In other words, it's not about being harsher. It's about being bolder. Amen? It's about being bolder. Somebody's out of line, tell them. Rebuke them. Amen? Get in line. You're not doing the right thing. This is not pleasing to God. You're out of order. I mean, the word says, go to your brother or your sister when you see them like that. If they refuse it, bring somebody else. If they refuse it, then you bring it to the office in the house of God. So again, grace. This is the grace of God. Is it, what, we've talked about this before. He says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Remember, grace of God. We got his plan. Amen. His love. His favor. <laughs> Hallelujah. And his delay of wrath. In Ephesians chapter 3. The dispensation of grace. That, and this is the age of grace. And in that dispensation of grace, it will come to an end. It's a period of time where we are free from the rituals of the Old Testament. We are in a dispensation of grace. In Ephesians 3 and verse 1. Key to victory. So again, we know that there is a process. Amen? You got to have truth. You got to learn truth. You got to put it to practice. And you don't want to get deceived again. Remember, deception is Satan's weapon. And power is, his, is fear. Ephesians 3, 1, let's speak it. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles. If indeed you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already. Again, this is powerful. <laughs> the, what's the dispensation? It exempt from Old Testament rituals. So we are in a dispensation of grace, which we know that is his plan of escape, his love, his favor, and the delay of wrath. How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given me by the effective working of his power. To me who am less than the least of all saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. By who? 
the church, the body, to the principalities and the powers and heavenlies, heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, and whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for which is your glory. Very powerful. The mystery of grace came by revelation. Well, I'm going to share with you one thing about Paul. He prayed in tongues. <laughs> he prayed in tongues a lot. In fact, he, he said, I wish you all prayed as much as I did in tongues. Why? Because the mysteries are revealed by praying in tongues. Is everybody okay? Paul began to explain his experience in this. Go to 1 Corinthians 14. First Corinthians 14. Is everybody there in verse 1? Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. But especially that you may what? Prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. Thank God. However, in the spirit he speaks what? Mysteries. What's mystery? It's a revelation revealed. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue is edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. So you got to understand that prophecy is an interpretation of tongues. Amen? So Paul's experienced which is so powerful, he was explaining his experience. He experienced using the use and understanding of the gifted tongues. Speak, spoke to God. It says that his mind had no understanding. Amen? Why? Because when you pray in tongues, the enemy knows what you think. He knows exactly what you're thinking, but he can't interpret the language of tongues. Every other language, he can know what you're thinking, but he cannot understand tongues. Why? Because it doesn't go to your mind. It goes to your spirit. And it is stored in your spirit. And at a due time, the Holy Spirit will take what's been stored in your spirit and bring it to the mind of understanding so it can be released. That's where revelation comes from. It comes from God, not from man. Even when you read the Bible, you may be illuminated, but there's every turns being illuminated and revelated. Amen? Revelation is different than illumination. Speak to God, mind doesn't understand, releases the mysteries of God. These are messages of God. It edifies the new man and the gathering. John 16. This is the process that we go through. That's why he said, desire the gifts. John 16. In verse 5. Key to victory. What's the key to victory? Avoid deception. Hello. <laughs> Glory. Verse 5 through 15. Jesus is explaining. He says, Now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me where you're going. But because I have said this, these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your what? Advantage. 
that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when the Holy, when he, the Holy, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Now, did the Spirit of the Lord reveal these things to Paul? Amen. The things that were from God, because he says, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. In other words, these are mysteries that are understood. These are hidden mysteries of God in the spirit realm that only the Holy Spirit, who's going to use the tools of the, his gifts for mankind to bring these things out of the spirit realm into the physical realm, into me and you, so that we may have understanding. Does everybody understand it? He said, verse 15, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. In other words, he will reveal it by revelation. Hello? Any hellos? Praise God. <laughs> Spirit of truth. He is the revealer. He's the distributor of all mysteries of God by revelation. That's why we pray in the Spirit more. Amen? That's why we seek. That's why in your own time you should be praying in the Spirit. Believe me, he will bring things. You might not understand it yet, but also when it's time. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to do a lot of oh, yeah. On. It might be a part of the whole new language. Oh, yeah. John 8. <laughs> See, I, I, I just really believe at this time because there's so much chaos and everything going on in the world that the Holy Spirit is trying to draw us away from all of this stuff and bring us back to our first love and bring us back into that place where we're going to know the truth no matter what the world says. And revelation will come and the hidden mysteries of God will come. He'll tell us things to come. You know what? When you know something's getting ready to happen, aren't you more comforted? Amen. John 8, 25. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins. Okay, that's 25. Then he said to them, who are you? And Jesus said to them, just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift the Son of Man up, then you will know that I am he. And that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me. I speak these things. And he who sent me with me, is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do the things that please him. He spoke of these words, many believed. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the what? And you shall know the what? The truth and the truth will make you free. Huh. See, again, when the Holy Spirit brings revelation, he's revealing the mysteries of truth. Amen? Truth will free you if you put it into the practice. It will never cause you to fall into bondage. Amen? Truth will set someone free if they practice it. 
bringing a new way of life and freedom all the time. So there's an area where you and I are always declaring truth, releasing truth, decreeing truth. We associate with truth. We associate with those who walk in truth. Amen? Does everybody understand that? Why? Because if you begin to drift, somebody else can tell you. That's why Jesus sent them out two by two. He didn't send two deceived people out. He sent two people who knew the truth out. 1 Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Key to victory is to what? Avoid deception. Hello. It's in a hello -y. How are you going to avoid deception? You better know the truth. <laughs> in verse 1. Now, the Spirit expressly says, every time I speak this, and this, I can always see the Holy Spirit on top of a rooftop. Yo! Hello! Expressly says, that in the latter times, latter days, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. What's he saying? Listen, in the last days, there's going to be a lot of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, of self-righteous, religious spirits, will come and cause people to depart from the level of faith that keeps them connected to his presence. It's going to bring an area where they're going to rely more on the letter than they are the presence. And it's going to bring a disconnect to them. These are deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Does everybody understand it? He said they will fall from the faith. In other words, they're going to fall from a faith, a level of faith that keeps them connected to the presence of God. Is everybody okay? 2 Timothy 4. Glory, remember he said that their conscience will be seared. In other words, only God can turn them around. Second Timothy 4 verse 1. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, decree the word. Is the word truth? Yeah. Be ready in season and out. Convince, rebuke again. Exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you must be watchful. In all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. What's he saying? Itching ears. Be prepared. To be ready in season and out of season is saying be prepared, be ready. It's common. So there isn't anything. Some, these things should not just sideswipe us or take us by surprise. They, he's warning us and telling us. It's there, it's there, it's there, and it's going to get stronger and stronger. Itching ears. Be prepared for every attack of deception. Amen. What's the key of victory? Avoid deception. To avoid deception, you got to know the truth. 2 Timothy 3. In verse 10. Be prepared. Is God preparing us? Listen, none of us have an excuse now. He's warned us. Amen. Amen. You're deceived in something, go to someone. Am I deceived? Ask them. You think I'm deceived in this? Now, if they say yes, don't get violent. 
And don't justify it or reason it. Get understanding to be free. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes. Keep him in line. Keep him in the boundaries. If you see him begin to drift, yo. Can't you hear the Holy Spirit on that roof, huh? that top of the roof over your house? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 10. Something like that. Where did I say to go now? Second, Second Timothy 3.10. Okay. But you have carefully followed my what? Doctrine. Manner of life. Purpose. Faith. Long-suffering. Love. Perseverance. Persecutions and afflictions which happened to be in Antioch and uh, Ikeum and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord did what? Delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus is going to suffer persecution. You will be persecuted by what you follow. You follow the truth. The enemy doesn't want that. Amen? You know, I, I just, listen, before I knew the Lord, I thought people who went to church were weak. I thought most of them, they were just, no, they were getting closer to dying because they were old. So when people were saying to me, why don't you go to church? I'm like, I'm young. <laughs> I didn't know anything about anything, you know. I mean, I was forced to go to church. I still didn't learn anything because I was in the church that didn't teach you nothing. That's so all I told you is to kneel down, get up, repent, and give some money. No one ever talked about the power of God. Never heard about. Hallelujah. And they put me in charge of collecting all the money for the candy. Well, it was stupid. <laughs> I had an operation going on, man. That was my side job. <laughs> I was a thief. <laughs> the Lord was kicking over tables. Is this, is this a den of thieves? Yes, I was one of them. Glory to God. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. It says here, but evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse. Or things going to get better or worse out there in deception. It's going to get worse. Deceiving and what? Being deceived. One of the major things, deceiving spirits are familiar spirits. Oh, they love to imitate the Holy Ghost. They're, dece they're the familiar spirits, and I've seen them in operation over and over and over. Verse 14, but you must, he said, you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of. In other words, you must continue in the things that set you free. I mean, how stupid can we be? You know, if it, somebody's got assurance and says, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Right? Why would you want to try to fix something that's not broke? See, that's where people try to get ahead of God. Because pride comes in. Other things come in. That a seducing spirit, that familiar spirit says, oh. There's more for you. Come on and follow me. And people follow him right into the den of thieves. Hello. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of knowing from whom you learned them. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith and Christ Jesus. Now, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and unprofitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man and woman of God may be completely, complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Wow. So what's he saying? He's saying, listen, follow. Follow that doctrine. Activate the truth of faith that doctrine that once set you free. 
what sets you free from what? All deceptive influence. Amen. Why? Because this influence is going to get stronger and stronger. It'll be more widespread. It'll be worse. Many will be biting the bait of deception. They will fight against the truth. And many will fall into a place where well, they will sell their out their salvation. Not all of them, but some of them. They're going to have to go through hell to get to heaven. You know, you got to remember something. What happens is that when people get into that condition, they lose the, uh, the reality of their call. They lose the reality of their purpose and their destiny. You know, for me and you, we're to be bringing heaven on earth. We're to be bringing heaven to earth. Amen? We're to be driving out demon, demonic voices. And we're to infiltrate the world system. We don't have time to argue over doctrine. Does everybody understand that? Man, forget it. We have a call, a purpose, and a destiny to fulfill. There's no time for foolishness and childish, goofy things. Amen? Mark 4. You know, right now, I mean, there's a lot of persecution to Jews and Christians, big time. Why? Because Christians carry truth. Amen? Jews carry the true God. They might not carry all the truths of freedom, but they've been connected by God. Amen? And the devil hates Jews and Christians. So they will be persecuted. You can see it all over the place now. More and more and more. Mark 4, verse 10. But when Jesus was alone, those around him. Is everybody there? With the twelve, I asked him about the parable. And he said to him, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear but not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. So does he only come once? No. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground. But when they hear the word immediately, they receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so they only endure for a time. After when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for all other things entering and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. These are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. Jesus explains the difference of those who are insiders and those who are outsiders. And how the enemy takes those who are inside and brings them outside, losing their ability to see, hear, and understand. What happens? They begin to lose their ability to see, hear, and understand. That's what the great falling away is about. In 1 Corinthians 15. What's the key to victory? Avoiding deception. <laughs> so simple, but not so easy.
easy for the enemy. Hallelujah. That's why we must be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not ours. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be what? Do not be what? Deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Don't be deceived. <laughs> Corruption. He says, awake to righteousness and do not sin for some uh, do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to their shame. But someone will say, how are the dead ra raised up and with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it what? Dies. That means you got to die to yourself. <laughs> Don't be deceived. Evil or deceptive company corrupts good discipline. Habits are discipline. Good discipline. Jesus says, <laughs> be careful. Be associated with those who walk uprightly or you'll become to drift away. Avoid deception. Manifest the truth. And Proverbs 12. Again, there's nothing wrong with examining yourself and going to someone. You know, listen, now don't go to someone in the world, amen? Especially your doctor is a worldly doctor. Don't go to them. Ask them if you're deceived. They're going to write you a prescription. You associate with the body. You ask them, is there something that you see in me that that's deceiving? Amen? And here's the Lord's response to anyone on that. He says, whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. Amen? But he who hates correction is stupid. That's what the Word says. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions will be what? Condemned. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be what? Oh, happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. Whoever loves rebuke, yes, rebuke me. Praise God that way I can learn. Don't get offended. Thank God. He's trying to rescue. Amen? But those who hate correction, dumb, dumb. Might as well give them a pack of gum. And we'll close in 2 Timothy chapter 21. Or verse 21. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. Gum, gum, dum, dum. Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Timothy 2.21, let's speak it together. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from stupidity, from the latter, from deception, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, so don't get sucked in. But be gentle to all, able to teach and patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance. So you're not going to grant them repentance. You're going to tell them the truth. Amen. That they may know the truth. And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive to, by him to do his will. Chapter 3. But know this, that in the last days, amen, 
Perilous times will come. For people will be what? Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than loving God. They will have a form of godliness, but they have been taken by deceptive, denying the power, and from such people do what? Turn away. Turn away. Again, be careful who you associate with. Be careful. And it's not just a person. It's about doctrine. It's about things that are on the news, on the internet, and everything else. Be careful. Because there's deception is increasing. In fact, what they're doing is they're censoring all truth right now. Every area of truth is being censored. So the thing that's coming through is deception. And it's snaring many people. Many. It's amazing how many people I knew that were sweet Christians are now sweet stupid. They've been taken. They bit it. And their conscience has been seared. You can't say nothing to them. And they're still voting and promoting for the things that are right. And of course there are those who are still voting and promoting for the things that are right, but they're still deceived. Be careful. Be very careful. Amen? What's the key of victory? Avoid deception. Hello. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed for coming together today. See, you came together today for First Fruits. We had a First Fruits Friday. And today's a First Fruit. Now maintain your fruit. Amen? Father, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to come and offer to you First Fruits. And for the first fruits message of the year, avoid deception. Thank you. Let that word, your seed, be empowered in each and every one and bring to remembrance when needed. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.